Hello Internet, today we'll be addressing a common problem with the mining cards. And yes, I'm wearing gloves today, because what you'll see is going to be the nastiest card I've ever fixed. Looking under a heatsink, I wonder if there are any rats. We'll have to take it apart and see. As nasty as it may be, EVGA is still the number one mining card there is, because EVGA, generally speaking, makes some of the best cards on the market, and I'll show you why. When the time comes to apply new thermal paste, four screws is all you need to remove, and the GPU becomes accessible. These shields are actually metal, and they soak up a lot of heat. While MSI and Gigabyte tried this, but they either use plastic shields or there's no thermal pads in between. And EVGA has them both, and that's why I like these cards so much. When you get a card like this, first look at these beads here. They look completely melted and turned into rock solid balls. We'll take care of them later. Next suspect is the memory phase MOSFET or the driver. The reason why I suspect those is because in the back we have a nasty burn. Now this burn may not necessarily be caused by those components. Instead, a lot of times a faulty capacitor causes a short and kills MOSFETs, driver with one shot. We will have to test those later so stick around. That looks reasonably clean, so let's remove the beads at the front and we can take some measurements. Mainly I'm interested in 12 volt line where the beads used to be. So I measure before and after. And it looks like we still have a short on the right side. Few things can be suspect here. One or two of the MOSFETs or their neighboring capacitors. So let's remove them all and see if anything changes. Okay, so those are removed and I will test them with my multimeter. If you don't know how to test these MOSFETs, please check out one of my previous videos on how to test a MOSFET. Okay, so the MOSFETs and the capacitors turned out to be okay. That means there's a short somewhere else and we still need to find it. I will solder this red wire to the pad and connect it to the positive lead on my power supply. Negative lead I will be tapping on the ground. And while I do that, I'll be looking at the board using thermal camera. It looks like the short is coming from the same hole I was digging into earlier. If you look closer, you'll see a small spot glowing when I connect the ground lead. This means I need to dig a little more in this corner right there.
Okay, and with that done, let's see if the short is gone. And it is. That's great, so let's solder both MOSFETs and the capacitor back to the rightful place while you sit back and enjoy the show once again. If you remember when we bore a hole in the back, few capacitors were removed. Those are 12 volt filtering capacitors. I don't need to rewire all of them, but I will add one here at the top. Then I will fill this hole with the epoxy, then with the mask and let it cure under the UV light. And this is basically the final result. Okay, so it's time to take some measurements. 12 volt line, we have kilo ohms, almost 5k on 5 volt, perfect. 60 on PEX, 900 on 1.8, just like from a factory. I'll quickly check all the data lines with my data line tester and a few more measurements to eliminate any variables, such as I want to make sure that at least the first data pair are matching both front and the back. Then I'll check the reference clock. Both should be the same as well. And the PEX reset. All looks good, so let's see how many amps it will draw. Just under one amp, that's a good sign. Now let's see if we have all the required voltages. 5 volt present, PEX, memory, looks like we have all the GPU cores, and 1.8 obviously is also there. Okay, let's plug it in and see if we get a picture. And while we're at it, I will run a memory test at the same time, so here we go. And looks like we have a winner here. It does output a picture. Now let's wait for a memory test to complete. And it did with no errors. Great. Now let's put everything back together so we can run some stress tests and see some benchmarks. It appears to be that the driver was installed, no problems. So I will reboot the computer one more time and let's run OCCT and Furmark and see if the card can operate as expected. And it seems like it does. Obviously the test is not complete without running a gaming engine. And as you can see, that also works fine. I guess the takeaway from that video is, if you're a miner, please regularly clean your rig or you end up with a broken card. And if you're really lucky, the 12 volt short circuit that we had on this card could have killed your entire rig. So at the very least, make sure your power supply has a built in high current protection. And this is it guys, if you take anything useful out of this video, please give me a like, post a comment below and subscribe for more and I'll see you later. Goodbye.